So the Reese representation theorem is a big result. It turns out to be uh, true in a larger area of mathematics than just what we're looking at right now. And it gets really interesting in infinite dimensions where the uh, hypotheses and conclusions get a little bit more complicated. But for us right now, uh, with a finite dimensional inner product space, um, what it says is that for any element of the dual, there is a unique element of the vector space itself such that the dual is actually given as the inner product with respect to that element. So, in other words, you can represent elements of the dual with elements of the vector space inside an inner product. So let's see. To prove this guy, um, we're going to start off by invoking our inner pro uh, our orthonormal basis. So <clears throat> in view of the last couple clips, if we've got a finite dimensional inner product space, then we can choose an orthonormal basis for it. All right. Then for any element V, if we have uh, phi of v, so um, this phi is our, our, our given element of the dual, then this looks like, well, phi of, and now I can represent v in terms of that orthonormal basis. And so we've seen the way to do that. It's v against e1 times e1 plus da 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 da, um, v against en times en. So here I'm just uh, giving the orthonormal decomposition of V with respect to our ONB. And now I can use linearity because uh, phi is an element of the dual space, so it's a linear functional. So I can break up this sum and in each case, I can pull out the coefficient. So I can pull the coefficient of uh, v e1 out of phi, where it's applied to e1, and so on and so forth. Should I do this in a couple steps? I think it's clear. All right. And so this is. Uh, by linearity in the first slot. And so now let's see. So now uh, I can rewrite this as V, V E1 conjugate E1 plus uh, V, V E N conjugate E N. by the conjugate linearity in the second slot. And then I can actually combine them as well. So the first coordinate in all of these is the same. It's just v. And so bringing together the sum, the thing, the thing in the second coordinate is this uh, sum of v's. Um, and then, so, so look at that, there's my U. So I'm going to define U to be phi of E1 conjugate E1 plus da 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 phi of E N conjugate E N. And then I have, and so all this whole thing worked for any generic uh, V. So it works for all V in my inner product space. And the only thing left to show is the uniqueness. And so, 
for the uniqueness, suppose that um, u1 and u2 are both elements of v. that have this property. Then, let's see, so since those things are equal, their difference is equal to zero. And then I can use additivity to see that u1 minus u2 is orthogonal to v. But that's for all v. And the only thing that's orthogonal to everything is 0. So by 612 plus u1 minus u2 is equal to 0. So in other words, u1 equals u2, and we've established uniqueness. Now, um, it's worth pointing out that there's a nice way to sort of encapsulate what we've just said here, um, <coughs> because it's uh, easy to check that this transformation from uh, phi to this this sum that we just had in the uh, this sum right here, that's a linear transformation. And so what we've actually shown is that v prime is isomorphic to v. Um, and I'm not going to prove it here because this this is actually the uh, content of six b seventeen seventeen. And so. I'll, I'll, I'll leave this one for, for you to do. Here, in, in this one that we were looking at, we were considering the transformation from phi to this sum. as defining the transformation from, from V prime to V. Um, <clears throat> but isomorphisms um, are far from unique, right? So just because two things are isomorphic doesn't mean that they're isomorphic in only one way. And there's an interesting example of that here. So for this isomorphism right here, the one we used in this theorem was we, we defined the isomorphism from V prime to V by this transformation right here. In uh, 6B17, you'll look at a different isomorphism, which is the one that takes U to this element of the dual. So this is going in the opposite direction still gives an isomorphism that shows you that V and V prime are isomorphic uh, for inner product spaces. Um, <coughs> it's, uh, it's just a different way of looking at the picture.